that was the document I read, and now I have placed it in the tin box beside the bas relief and the papers of Professor Agnew. And with it shall go this record of mine, this test of my sanity, wherein is pieced together that which I hope may never be pieced together again. I have looked upon all that the universe has to hold of horror, and even the skies of spring and the flowers of summer must ever be after be poison to me. But I do not think my life will be long. As my uncle went, as poor Johansson went, so shall I go. I know too much, and the cult still lives. Cthulhu still lives too, I suppose, again in that chasm of stone that has shielded him from s since the sun was young. His accursed city is sunken once more, for the vigilant sailed over the spot after the April storm. But his ministers on earth still bellow and prance and slay around idle-capped monoliths in lonely places. He must have been trapped by the sinking waltz within his black abyss, or else the world would be would by now be screaming with fright and frenzy. Who knows the end? What has risen may sink, and what may ha what has sunk may rise. Loathsomeness waits and dreams in the deep, and decay spreads over the tottering cities of man. A time will come, but I must not and cannot think. Let me pray that if I ever, if I do not survive this manuscript, my executors may put caution before audacity and see that it meets no other eye. Hey everybody, that ends the Call of Cthulhu. Spoiler, I guess. Uh, but anyway, that's the that's the Call of Cthulhu by H.P. Lovecraft. Obviously, that's what I'm going to be talking about today. I know I just did like a weird sitting thing, but uh, my chair is all goofy. Uh, how's it going? Oh, uh, why am I dressed like this, you might ask? I just wanted to get in character uh, and just talk about Call of Cthulhu. So Call of Cthulhu is uh, not the only piece of writing by H.P. Lovecraft, and it's, I guess it's the one that he's most well-known for. It's not even one of his best works. Um, it's actually a short story. It's not even one of his full books. Like The Mountains of Madness was one of his full books, and The Shadows of Ainsmouth was a book that was published sort of after he died. Um, but... It was like it was the breakaway work for H.P. Lovecraft. I think it sort of separated like his early works from his later works, and it was right in the middle. It was uh, uh, written in 1926, but published in 1928, and it was written while he was writing an essay called uh, "The Su Supernatural Horror in Literature," which uh, is a very long essay, uh, but it's essentially like a doctoral thesis that he sort of wrote on his own because H.P. Lovecraft was a self-educated person. Um, but he he sort of described like what is supernatural horror and uh the, like the call of cthulhu is what he's writing while he was researching that and so you can tell from his stuff before the call of cthulhu and the stuff that like the call of cthulhu and after that he had sort of developed what he understood he now like had like a feeling of what horror should look like uh but it's it's a short story and it is really good uh it, really good as far as lovecraftian things are concerned it contains all of the elements that you sort of that we define as lovecraftian uh, and so it is like his quintessential work. I would put it in the mid range. I like um, I like the Arkham Horror is one of my favorites. Uh, there's a couple of others, but like that's one of my favorites. Shadows of Ainsmouth is is all right. Um, but like the Call of Cthulhu is like mid range. I mean, so basically it contains the things that are Lovecraftian, right? As I did the air quotes. Uh, but ba it contains uh, it's got an unreliable narrator. Uh, because the story is told from a first person sort of perspective and not only that but that first person is that that person has gone a little bit insane but that person's also regurgitating stories of things that they've researched so the stories are all like it's like a story within a story within a story kind of feel so there's unreliable narrators like all over the place in the call of cthulhu and then the other thing is that like it covers like the ancient hidden capital t truths that exist in the universe uh, and that like only certain people know. So it's got the ancient truths that are also that are protected by the secret cults uh, and and societies who have like their information contained in uh, uh, occult manuscripts that are forbidden and hard to find except in certain places. But the main character sort of stumbles across them or stumbles across people who have stumbled across them. And then it includes like strange events. Like there's a whole there's a whole business right in the beginning about like a, a bunch of people having nightmares all like kind of at the same time. And these nightmares all have like the same image. And like this one artist is like getting this like basically this, this stuff from Cthulhu and like can sort of picture the city of Rulia under the sea. Uh, so there's like weird occurrences and there's like storms and stuff in the story. And there's things that are like completely unexplainable. 
that happened. And so like, it's got those weird events. Uh, and then it's got like this encounter with an old God where like some fishermen stumble across Cthulhu themselves in, inside, you know, really and open the chasm tomb that, that uh, in which Cthulhu sleeps and awakens Cthulhu. Um, so there's that. And then there's a, uh, there's like a whole bunch of people going crazy. Like people just going insane and getting locked up in asylums. And then like it sort of ends mysteriously and ominously. Like we're not sure what happens to the narrator after the story's over. Um, and it sort of leaves it to like this concept that 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 person probably dies. Um, so these are like the main like things that exist in like a Lovecraftian story. And they're all contained within the call of Cthulhu, which is why like this is considered his breakout like quintessential work. Um, and it's sort of what defines when you think of Cthulhu, like the Cthulhu mythos and sort of what is like H.P. Lovecraft's like Cthulhu stuff. That's what that's where you'll find it is in the call of Cthulhu. Now, like I said, uh, this is not the only H.P. Lovecraft tale. Uh, I mean, like, so Whisper in Darkness, super good. Um, the, the lots of people like the color out of space. I think color out of space is OK. Uh, the Dunwich Horror. I said Arkham Horror. I meant it was the Dunwich Horror is what I meant. Arkham Horror is a is a, a board game, uh, but the Dunwich Horror is what I meant is my is one of my favorites. Um, I don't know why I said the Arkham Horror, uh, but then but then like at the Mountains of Madness uh, is another one. Uh, Shadows over Innsmouth I mentioned before. Uh, Dreams Dreams in the Witch House. Dreams in the Witch House is one of my favorites, mostly because it covers like a couple of things. It covers like occult societies. It covers like uh, ritualistic festivals. And it covers like mathematics as like magic, um, which is one of the things that sort of pops up in Lovecraftian stuff a lot. But that's neither here nor there. We're really trying to focus on the call of Cthulhu, the short story by H.P. Lovecraft, and like wh who is H.P. Lovecraft himself. But um, essentially, like the call of Cthulhu, it sort of recovers like these recurring themes that we'll find out. It covers Cthulhu, which, you know, we now know is like the thing everyone knows Cthulhu now unless you live under a rock uh it covers like the necronomicon and it covers like ancient secret societies it basically covers the fear of the unknown like what is actually happening uh then these capital t truths of what is actually happening in the universe and like, this whole incomprehensible thing by normal humanity but then like secret cults that sort of know about it uh and then like the protagonist ends up facing these old gods and they're helpless uh, and like it, you know, there's just complete like humans that mean nothing. Like they end up having to like try to use a boat as a weapon at one point in the story. And then it covers like the sort of viscerate textures of like the slimy things and the, um, the, the like tentacles and stuff. But also, also, it also covers like cyclopean non Euclidean geometry, the kind of stuff you find in like Beetlejuice, like the sort of horrific stuff that like you can't the, the mind just can't explain and so it feels uneasy in these situations and then finally it covers like cults and murders and like corpses and things like that nightmares uh these sort of traditional horror things that occur too uh, so it's like a quintessential horror story um but i said i i'm, I'm uh, going to be making a video on like the uh, call of cthulhu rpg so i figured i should probably cover in here uh because this is going to come first my feelings on hp lovecraft uh I love H.P. Lovecraft's writings. Uh, not all of them are great, right? Like I said, Call of Cthulhu, I consider sort of mid-grade. Um, the Dunwich Horror is really good. Um, the Whisper in the Dark is really, Darkness is really good. Um, I think there's some good stuff, but then there's also some bad stuff. I mean, Stephen King listed H.P. Lovecraft as one of the best, sort of most American writers and also one of like the, the top writers uh, uh, ever as far as horror is concerned. Um, I agree. But I also recognize that that when I say this, I also have to admit that there is a negative side to H.P. Lovecraft. There's a racist side to H.P. Lovecraft, which has sort of become much more prevalent lately. And with the popularity of Lovecraft Country, that sort of comes out a bit more. And I've read the actual Lovecraft Country by Mark Ruff. Um, it's actually a really good story. And then I've seen the show, which, you know, which delves even deeper into the racism um, of like some of like H.P. Lovecraft's stuff. And so, like, I should address that right now in this video. Uh, so I recognize, I recognize that H.P. Lovecraft had some racist tendencies. And, and it's, you know, people who want to, like, glaze over that are sort of missing the fact that it's true. Like, there was there was some things with, like, the fear of the unknown that are, you know, kind of fear of the foreign alien. Um, and there's some other stuff, and people might be rolling their eyes right now. But, like, realistically, it's 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 fine. We can We can except that there was racism that went on and that it, it was pretty deep. Like there's some stuff that H.P. Lovecraft said in letters that was pretty bad. So 
we can accept that and then not just call it off as like a product of the times, which is what people say. I don't really, I recognize that it's deeper than that and that's fine. We can recognize that it's deeper and we can recognize that that trauma affects some people. Um, so we can, we can also recognize these things. We can be like, that's that, that hurts some people and some people are really upset about that and that's okay. Like it's okay to be really upset about it, but um, like that's, that's like, we can't, there's nothing we can do about situations like that. We can't really fix or undo the fact that this happened. And so we just have to kind of go along with it. It's like we can we can, we can, can like things that come from pro problematic people. We just have to be aware and accept that those things are problematic and recognize that people are going to people are gonna want to explain it. And, you know, there's going to be people on both sides of the spectrum. So I accept that there's that. So that's my statement. Uh, like I can't undo the fact that H.P. Lovecraft was racist, but like he's dead already and he doesn't, none of this money goes to anyone that really like was part of his family or anything. So it's not like I'm supporting that. I'm just buying this work. In fact, this particular book, I don't even think was published with permission from the Arkham house people who supposedly own the rights to H.P. Lovecraft in some weird way. But, um, so yeah, that's, that's not even a thing. Uh, but anyway, so now that I've said that statement, I'll just go ahead and, and say that the reason why I like H.P. Lovecraft's works is because they sort of they're a little they're a little weird and a little unsettling uh, and they cause me to like really think about like stuff, um, which is, you know, which is something that, that it's hard to say about some writers, uh, but then also has like these cool narrative narrative things like, you know, unreliable narrators and the like. So. Um, but that's it. That's all I'm going to say. Uh, I have uh, the Call of Cthulhu that I possess is in the complete Cthulhu Mythos Tales that I bought like from uh, like Barnes and Noble or something. It's Fall River Press that makes it. Uh, it's not Arkham House, so you know there's that. That's a thing. Uh, but I also have the um, the unabridged works of H.P. Lovecraft or the unabridged horrors of H.P. Lovecraft or something like that uh, on like audiobook. You can find it on uh, Audible. Uh, and that was made by uh, someone who lives in the Oregon area. So that works out for me. But uh, that's it for me, guys. Uh, tell me. You can go ahead and comment if you hate the H.P. Lovecraft works or if you love them uh, or if you have some commentary on the racism thing. Whatever. It's fine. I'll, I'll, I'll engage with you because I recognize that that's a thing. Um, but otherwise, have a good day. Uh, if you want to read some really kind of creepy stuff, let's, uh, you know, you can read some Lovecraft. You know what? I'm going to finish. I'm actually going to finish with like the opening of Call of Cthulhu, which I think is probably the most quoted thing from H.P. Lovecraft. Uh, so I'll go ahead and read that. And so that you guys can know like part of the reason why I like uh, Lovecraft. Uh, but here we go. It's the very beginning of it. Call of Cthulhu. <clears throat> the most wonderful thing I think. Oh, start over. The most merciful thing in the world, I think, is the inability of the human mind to correlate all of its contents. We live on a placid island of ignorance in the midst of black seas of infinity, and it was not meant that we should voyage far. The sciences, each straining in its own direction, have hitherto harmed us little, but some day the piecing together of dissociated knowledge will open up such terrible, terrifying vistas of reality and of our frightful position therein, that we shall either go mad from the revelation or flee from the deadly light into the peace and safety of a new dark age. Think about that. See you later, everybody.